Today, we are talking about men after God's own heart. And our guests are Pastor William Jordan of Divine Fellowship Church and Elder Paul Sanders of Shiloh Temple Church of God in Christ, both located here in St. Louis, Missouri. And Elder Sanders, before we went to break, I talked about you being a modern day Jonah. A lot of times we see men who are skeptical or hesitant about really receiving the call of God upon their life. I mentioned earlier that you're a youth pastor at your church. You're involved in the uh, men's ministry at your church. But I understand it wasn't always that way. No, it wasn't. Tell us how and the events that led you to accept the call upon your life. Well, I was always went to church, but I wasn't in church. Mm -hmm. (laughs) The church wasn't in me. So it came a point in time in my life where my my father, the late Bishop W. Wesley Sanders, had passed away. And a few years later, it seemed like every everything I touched went wrong. Everything I did went wrong. Um, it was at that time where I made up my mind that um, I wanted to get my life right and to be saved. But bef- while I was making my mind up, I kept going back and forth. The enemy comes in. The devil comes in. He's real. And I went back and forth about the idea of being saved and whatnot. I thought my life would be over, like everybody else thinks, (laughs) before they get saved. And so when I was out drinking and smoking my black and mild, God took the the very taste away of beer, Mm -hmm. made it taste funny to me, start making me choke on my black and mild that I had experience in smoking. Wow. See, and that's even interesting that you'll choke on a black and mild. It's called black and mild. It's supposed to be mild. Yes. Amen. But the Lord had you choking on that. Yes. And after, after he was working with me and I got in trouble um, with tickets and whatnot, speeding tickets or whatever the case was. And I finally just made up my mind. I was drinking that last six pack trying to couldn't get past the first two gulps. (laughs) And so God said, pour it out. So I did. I poured it out. And that next Sunday morning, I went down to the altar and got saved. Amen. Amen. Accepted Christ in my life. And there was a time I sought after God for the uh, filling of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, we call it nowadays, but it's the Holy Ghost. Yes. (laughs) And uh, I was filled with the Holy Ghost six months later after tearing for it for six months. And God told me to preach. Mm -hmm. When he told me to preach, I ran. Here's the Jonah part. Mm Mm-hmm. I ran. I ran far and I ran fast (laughs) because in my mind, I wanted to know what what was I going to tell these saints and people of God that's been here 30, 20, 10 years and whatnot. What could I say to them that could help them? So I ran and I tried to go back and do what, you know, I was doing before. But the taste still didn't taste the same. Mm -hmm. I was still choking, but I was forcing myself. Mm -hmm. I was in a place where I didn't belong and I knew it, Mm -hmm. but I couldn't shake it. But then one day, uh, my wife came to me every Sunday and asked, was I going to church? And I always would tell her no. She didn't nag me. She didn't pull on me. She didn't worry worry me. She just would ask, are you going to church? Then when she come home, well, so-and-so was asking about you. The pastor was asking about you. And uh, I said, okay. And then one day I just said, I'm going to go back. And I've been back ever since. So what yeah. was that event that led you to to say that you're going to go back? Because I know that there are women uh, who are asking their sons, are you going to go to church? You know, they're talking to their husbands. Baby, will you go to church? You know, what was it that clicked with you that said, I'm going to get up and go to church? Well, the word of God lets us know that uh, with love and kindness have I drawn thee. My wife didn't nag. She didn't uh, pull and tug. She didn't uh um, I believe she followed the leading of the Holy Ghost um, when she was talking to me and how to approach my particular situation. And it's those kind words and that the drawing that God was doing to me that led me back to Christ and back to my plate, my rightful place and where I needed to be. So that that's a really good point. Um, and I think that it might be difficult sometimes because those of us who are just filled with the Holy Spirit, who are in love with Jesus, you know, it's difficult for us to grasp when we see loved ones who are suf- suffering even unnecessarily because you just know that it would be so much easier if you would just go ahead and relent and give your life to the Lord. But um, I, I, I'm familiar with that scripture um, in Jeremiah. I think it's 30. 
the 31st chapter, but it talks about that God is constantly drawing us to him with his loving kindness. And um, that reminds me, even with loved ones in my life, that your job is to plant the seeds. You know, the word talks about some plant, some water, but it's God who provides the increase. Yes. And that's why Inspired Overflow, we want to pray for you. We want to give you the strength to continue to plant those seeds in the in the lives of your loved ones. Perhaps you have a father, a brother, an uncle who you know they need a relationship with the Lord and you're feeling weary. It just doesn't look like your prayers are coming into manifestation. These men who are here in the studio, they know all about that, and they're here to pray with you. Our phone lines are open at 618-874-5785. Now, um, Pastor Jordan, uh, you do a lot of outreach work um, in your community and and also at the prison. Um, Can you just talk about um, what does having a heart for God look like uh, for a man? What does that mean to you? First of all, I feel that you got to have a heart that is happy, a heart that is at peace, and only God can give you that. So when God calls you, he also prepares you. And when you get to calling, uh, if you accept it, then God's going to give you everything you need to do what you have to do. Like we have an outreach uh, in the prison now that we are to help the the families of the those incarcerated, uh, sorry, to help the family of those incarcerated, and what we do is by donations, people donate to it, and and we uh, see what they need because the inmate has said, if I could just didn't have to worry about my family, mm-hmm. I could be more at peace, but it bothers me when I'm incarcerated, uh, worrying about my wife and my children, how they're doing. But we go and if at their request. Now, we don't just say, who is your family? When they request it, then we will go and we'll see how they're doing. They need food, we'll get them some food. They need some med- medication, we do that. And we also uh, have an outreach at our church where that God gave me this vision where we are to have three uh, neighborhood gardens, okay, and we're going to raise food and give it away free. And right now we're giving away sandwiches, chips, and juice every third Tuesday at our church. And we have like 37 or 38, sometimes 40 people that come and get sandwiches every third Tuesday. And they will say that I'm hungry. I don't have anything to eat. So God is blessing us that way. We don't have to get anything from the church. It's all through donations. Sure. You know, um, Elder Sanders, uh, Pastor Jordan has talked about just the great need in the community. Um, Through his work with the church, you know, he's experiencing inmates who are concerned about providing for the needs of their family. His church is providing outreach uh, with free meals. So the word talks about um, that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. How can churches attract and even retain men to do the work of God? Well, in my mind, the the Holy Ghost needs to do Mm -hmm. what the Holy Ghost needs to do. It's it's man's proper place to be in the forefront of of what God is doing. Um, In the beginning, um, during the ancient uh, times, men did the sacrifice and then the ladies stayed at home. Mm -hmm. I know that was a part of that particular culture at that time, but that's whatever reason, that's how God made it, deemed it to be. And for whatever reason, in this day and age that we live in now, now the women <laughs> do all the praising and all the worshiping, and, and the men kind of lay back, some of them, not all of them, but some of them seem to be laid back. But the praise and, and worship is, the, is a gateway to the blessings of God. When praises go up, blessings come down. So if we can let the Holy Ghost speak to us, each individual church, you know, um, in St. Louis and everywhere. If we can let the Holy Ghost speak to us and lead and guide us, then, you know, uh, we will effectively 
um, have men in the forefront where we need to be. Sure. You know, um, and I think it's almost like I, I'm even seeing it's like a stronghold um, because even when you start talking about that praise and worship is what gets you to your blessing. Even if you go to some churches, you see a lot of men who are just kind of complacent, just kind of lackadaisical. And we're not beating up on the men. We're just pointing out in some churches, you know, it's kind of difficult. You do see women who are more exuberant in their worship. Um, and so just hearing you talk about that, Elder Sanders, that lets me know as an intercessor that that I need to be specifically praying for praise and worship to enter Mm -hmm. into the hearts and into the men of our church. Yes. You know, so that we can break that fallow ground, which is really what's there. Amen. And that that's a strong quote there. I'm curious. I know you, Reverend Jordan, you know, you're on fire for the Lord. But what keeps you committed? Um, did you ever, as a man of God, you know, figure out, you know what, I'm out of here. I, I just don't want to be involved in ministry. I, I don't want to deal with this anymore. Uh, what keeps you connected to the church? Uh God told me one day when I was kind of down about my church not having a whole lot of members, and he told me, he said, William, uh, I'm not concerned about the quantity. I'm concerned about the quality. And he said, don't look at what's around you because that's gloomy. Look at what's up. That's glorious. And that just hit me right here. And ever since that message came to me, I don't look at what's happening into the world. I'm concerned about it, but I'm so filled up with the Holy Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ and what he did for me that I don't worry about what people are doing because I know it's an individual walk. Okay. Yes. And every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. So I'm, I'm just fill up with the Holy Spirit. And you know, Pastor Jordan, I love your philosophy. Um, you and I, we talked prior to this uh, broadcast, but you said, I may have some concerns, but I don't have any worries. Amen. That's right. And mm. I think that that's just a great, 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 you know, philosophy to have as a believer because the word talks about to cast every care right, and anxiety right. unto him. Mm. So yeah, you might have some concerns, but no worries because I know that God has my back. Amen. What we're going to do is we're going to go to our phone lines because we have a couple of people who are holding. Um, And so we'll go ahead and take those calls. Thank you so much for calling in to Inspired Overflow. Okay, no, they are not there. Okay, what we'll do right now is we'll take a, okay, we'll take a, do we have a caller or not? We do. Okay, there they go. Okay, thank you so much for calling in to Inspired Overflow. What's your prayer request or question or comment for our guests? Are you there? Okay, we'll take a quick break. Uh, We're having a little bit of technical difficulties, but when we come back, we're going to hear more about uh, some creative ideas that men's ministries can employ, amen, to really spur up the activity of the men in the church. So don't go away too far because we'll be right back.